Today I'm going to be going over how I use an old laptop like this guy here as a NAS and some ways that you can do it if you want a similar setup at home. So the first question is, why use an old laptop like this as a NAS instead of a pre-made NAS or something like a DIY desktop that seems more suited towards NAS use? And the first and biggest reason for me is that these laptops are almost free. Or in this case, this laptop for me was actually free. I got this guy from an e-waste bin, most likely due to these vertical lines on the screen. And because of that, there's almost no cost. And the other great thing with laptops is their super low power consumption. This laptop, depending on use, is normally between 10 and 20 watts, depending on if the screen's on and how much CPU load there is. That's much less than any normal desktop you'd get in like an older gaming PC that might be anywhere between like 40 and 100 watts at idle. And that's probably similar or about the same as most of the pre-built NASs from like Synology or QNAP. The other nice thing with using a laptop as a NAS is it has everything you need to use it built in. Built in keyboard, mouse, screen, and essentially UPS with the battery. So then you don't need to have extra parts laying around. So essentially you take this guy, you connect it to the network, and you connect it to power and it's ready to go. And it's a pretty small package for what it is, especially if you close the lid and tuck it into a little corner. You can fit it in a lot of places. Now there are some disadvantages. Laptop NASs don't really scale up very well. You can't put a lot of drives in them. Typical laptops only have one hard drive bay. Some of the larger ones might have two though, but there is a few ways to get around it if that's your goal. One way is using some of these little adapters. So this is a DVD drive to SATA hard drive. So if you have an older laptop with a DVD drive, you can use it to put another hard drive in. You can also just use USB hard drives, which can be nice. They're not the best hard drives, but they can just add extra storage to a system like this relatively cheaply and easily. Another issue on a lot of laptops is networking. Wi-Fi is not optimal for NAS use. Not only is it relatively slow, it also shares bandwidth with all the other devices, essentially having your speeds if you're copying to another device on Wi-Fi. And it also has relatively low reliability compared to wired Ethernet. One issue I've noticed with a lot of laptops, especially lower end and older ones, is they only have 100 meg ethernet ports, like this guy here, which I'd say is a bit too slow for a NAS you want to use today. Luckily, you can get these adapters pretty cheaply, and these are little USB 3 to gigabit ethernet adapters. So if your laptop has USB 3, you can essentially get the full gigabit ethernet speeds on it. But even if your laptop doesn't have USB 3, like some of the older ones, you can still get about 400 to 300 megabytes per second, which is about 3x what a 100 meg ethernet port is. Not great, but still a pretty big improvement, especially considering these adapters are often about 10 bucks online. Now let's talk a little bit about the software setup. You can use pretty much any OS or software setup you want here, but in today's example, I'm gonna be just using Windows 10. And the reason I'm gonna be using Windows 10 is because most of these laptops come with Windows on it already. So it's the easiest because you just have to change a few configuration settings. Whereas with Linux or another NAS distro, you'd have to do a full reinstall of the OS to get it working. The other advantage with using Windows for a NAS is that Windows is relatively easy to use for a lot of users out there and they already know how to get at things. Whereas if you're starting with Linux or Unraid or another OS, it's kind of a whole new slate of things to learn. So I'd say the steps for a lot of users getting there is less. With that out of the way, let's go take a look at this system and set this guy up to be used as a NAS. So this is pretty much a blank updated Windows 10 install I have on this system here. One thing to note is make sure you set a password. Windows can be kind of weird if your user account doesn't have a password. And the user permissions and shares you use is the same as the login in Windows. So if you want another user, you can just create another user that you can log into in Windows and that's the best way to do it. And you can use that using a normal settings app or a control panel or whatever version of Windows you want to use. So first thing I'm going to do is just make a share folder. I'm just going to call it share. And this is where it's going to be sharing the files over the network from. And then in order to set up the sharing, you basically just right click properties and then go sharing. And then I like to click on advanced sharing because it gives me a few more options and click on share this folder. You're going to get an option for share name. So that's what name it will appear on the network as to other systems. Because you can have multiple shares, you want to make sure that you know which share you're doing. By default, there's no shares, so this is going to be the only share that shows up. It'll say limit the amount of users, so that's if you're on Windows Server, you can raise that above 20. And then the next thing I'm going to click on is permissions. So the way that permissions work in Windows shares over the network is, it's the lowest of the share permissions and the NTFS file permissions. So a user has to have access to whatever thing it is like reading 
on both the file system level and the share level. And what I typically do, especially for a simple home NAS, is set it so that everyone has access on the share and then limit permissions within the file system if I only want some users to be able to access it. By default, only users with permissions can access it. So even though the share has full permissions to everyone, not everyone can actually access and change files as I'll show in a little bit. So I'm gonna hit okay. And essentially like that, I have a network share. And I can do that for multiple folder folders on the network and I'm ready to go. So now let's take a look at accessing that share. So there's two main ways to access a share on the network. The first is the host name of the system. So that's the name you give the system. One easy way to find that in Windows is if you go under system and settings, and then you go under about, it'll list your name. So that name you can type into other systems and find it. So in this case, I call this guy laptop NAS. And the other way is with the IP. Typically, I try to use the host name of the system, not the IP, because the host name of the system will stay the same if you change network cards or the network settings. Whereas the IPs can change if you switch between like a new network card that you get or between different networks. Sometimes there's issues of DNS and name resolution in your network, so only the IP works, but if it can work, I typically try to use it. I'm gonna now be using this PC here, which is gonna be working as a client. So um, the easiest way I find to access it is doing the map a network drive, and that makes it show up as another drive in the system. So I'm gonna just do slash slash, and then laptop NAS, the host name of the system, and then share. And then I'm gonna connect, click on connect using different credentials because I have a different password than this system has. If they both have the same username and password, it'll work. But here I'm just gonna type in my username and then my password here. And it looks like that's right. And it shows up as an empty share. And just as a quick test, I can make a folder and now I have an empty folder that I can copy files to. And basically, it's as easy as that to nap the network share. And if I wanna copy a file, I can basically use it like any other folder on the system. So I'm copying my OBS installer right now over the network. It's relatively slow as I'm using Wi-Fi on the system, but it completed successfully. And just to show it's on the system, I can now double click on share and see the files on the other system. And essentially, this system's gonna just sit here continually sharing that folder until something happens. And just to keep an eye on things that happen, Windows wants to update every month for the major cumulative updates that need a reboot. Just make sure it gets rebooted. It should just start back up on boot up. And then the other thing to note of is sleep settings. Make sure the laptop's set to never sleep when plugged in. So then that way it won't go to sleep on you and be unaccessible. Thanks for watching this little video and setting up an old laptop like this as a NAS. And let me know if you have any questions or suggestions.